Hi everyone, this is Kathy Grosskirk with Bookkeeping Clean and Simple and today I'm going to be talking about a relatively new feature that is available in the QuickBooks Online Accountants Portal and that is the ability to have templates for your chart of accounts. And this comes in very handy when you're setting up new client files and especially if you are working with different clients that are in the same industry, you can actually have available a template that you can upload and not have to create it every time or upload a CSV or an Excel file every time you want to create for a new company within a set group of industries that you're working for. So before I actually get into this demo, I want to make sure you understand this might be a little bit longer than normal today. And also I wanted to ask you that if you like my channel and have yet subscribed, please go ahead and do so. Share this with others like this video. I'm trying to get my viewer hours up to over 4,000 for this year and I'm almost there. So if you guys can help me do that, I would appreciate it. My content is primarily geared toward accountant users, but I have a lot of small business owners that like the content that I share as well. So you're all welcome to be a part of my family. Now with that said, I am in my bookkeeping clean and simple firm. And the only way that you can access this from what I can see is that you have to be in your own firm to be able to access this initially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the accountant tools area and open that up. And as you can see under the tools section here, go down here and it's the very last function down here on the bottom of the tools list. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And as you can see, I have already added a template in here. I actually did this when I was working with a test company that I was working with, but there are several ways that you can use this and it's very convenient. So first of all, if you want to go ahead and add a new template and not create one from scratch, you can go ahead and click on this little green button right here. And what that does is it opens up this wizard here. So you can edit these default accounts for different business types or create a totally new template. So let's say we wanted to create a service-based business template, or we can create one from scratch, or we can do the product-based business here. Let's go ahead and start with the service-based business. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and then click on next down here. And what this does is it allows you to add and edit any account names or account types here. And then you can also have the option to turn on or off the account number so that you can add those here. A lot of people don't like using account numbers, but one of the things that account numbers will help you with is to organize your chart of accounts in a certain order. Like if you want certain accounts to be organized under a sub account, for instance, sometimes it's helpful to have those account numbers turned on. And this way you can add them in one fell swoop. So I'm just going to show you that it opens up the ability to add the account numbers. When you turn it off, you can't do that. that. That's not to say that you can't do it later when you're setting up another company. So you can go ahead and click on these little things to add sub accounts under each of these things. And then as you scroll through here, this is just kind of like a boilerplate. And then you can go back and set this up however way you want to set up. And then once you get it to where you want to, you want to go ahead and save it and you would name it whatever you want to, to save it to or what you want to call it. So we're not going to actually do that here. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that, but that's how you would actually do that. And that's how I came up with this basic services based COA here. So the other thing that you can do as well as is, is, is if you already have a template name in here and you want to create a slightly different one than what you have here, but basically maintain the same integrity and that kind of thing, you can click on duplicate. And when you do that, you can go in here and you can go ahead and duplicate this and add or take out whichever accounts you want and save that. And, and you would have to name it something totally different. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel all that. That's the other thing that you can do. Now, the other thing that I like that you can do is you can actually import 
either a CSV or a Excel spreadsheet here. So let's go ahead and see if we can attempt to do this here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the import button and it's going to ask you to go over here and select a file. So let's go ahead and do that. And I actually have a couple of these that I can go in here and, and possibly work with. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my client folders. And I actually did a setup not too long ago where I was working with this. So here we go. Chart of accounts formatted for QBO imports. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and open that up. And as you can see, when you do this, you have to map your spreadsheet files. And since we don't have account numbers assigned to this, then it, you're not going to see a column for that. And then we're going to go ahead and click on save. And then it brings in all the different accounts for this. And again, you can go through here and you can add new sub accounts. You can reorder this. And if you wanted to add, again, account numbers to this, you can go ahead and do this. And, and I'm going to go ahead and bring this in, uh, but I'm going to not turn on the account numbers. Let's call this sample psychologist COA. So we're going to distinguish that from the one that I created earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and click on here and save. And that's going to add that to our list here. Oh, and the other thing you have to make sure of, and it'll let you know, is if you have to have all required fields added before you save. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and I think I can just delete this out of here and I'm going to go ahead and just delete that line out of here and that should take care of that. I think that was the only issue that we had with this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save. So you know, those warnings are very important. So as you can see, I have two different accounts here or two different chart of accounts here. So say I wanted to apply this to a company that I wanted to apply the template to. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this template to one of the files that I have in here. And I actually have a QB Ledger test file that's still, I think, within the 60 days that this will overwrite that. So if I go in here, and, and of course you can't edit anything here. You, you just basically are going in here and whatever's in here is what you do. And you go ahead and click on Save. And that's going to add that new default. And then it says these accounts weren't added. This is likely due to them having the same name and type or number as an existing account. So if I go into that test file, we and, and let's do that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to that QB Ledger test file. And before I even go into the chart of accounts, I want to show you that if you're in a client file, you cannot access that feature. You have to be within the QBOA realm to be able to access that feature. And that's real important to understand. So I'm going to go to the chart of accounts. And you can see that that chart of accounts was the one that, and it overwrote what was already in here. Okay. And, and the reason why I was able to do that is because this is a relatively new QB ledger test file. And it was within the 60 days where it would overwrite that. So if you had another file that was older than that, you would probably not be able to do that. So primarily a use for this would be is if you're setting up a brand new QBO file for a client and wanted to go ahead and have a template that you could use. And again, if you work with, say, psychologists and stuff like that, then you can set up the template that you would use as kind of a shell, and then you can modify that as you go. And that way you don't have to recreate it every time. It's a really great time saver, and I'm glad that they came up with this feature. So anyway, I hope this video helps you today. Y'all have a wonderful day. Take care, and we will see you very soon.